inside the FBI probe of Pilot Flying J and its CEO, Jimmy Haslam. I don't think I slept at all Saturday night, uh, Friday night. His company under fire. Somebody asked me today if I was going to step down as president. An apology to Cleveland. The last thing we ever want to do is put any kind of blemish on the city of Cleveland, which we've grown to love, or the Browns. And a promise to fans. The fans should not worry. Our family's going to own this asset for a long, long time. A year after being introduced as the Browns' new owner. I can't tell you how excited our family is to be part of Cleveland, and more importantly, the Cleveland Browns. A federal criminal probe is in full swing. Good evening, I'm Danita Harris. And I'm Chris Flanagan. Welcome to our News Channel 5 special, Haslam and the Pilot Flying J Investigation. We're going to take you page by page through the FBI's playbook into the raid of the company's Knoxville headquarters. This story is not about sports, but about alleged fraud and wrongdoing. We begin with the investigation, secret tape recordings, and what Pilot Flying J management knew. Five on your side, Chief Investigator Ron Regan joins us with how this case unfolded. Well, Jimmy Haslam has not been charged with any crime and has consistently denied wrongdoing. But this is a sworn statement from a lead FBI agent on the case. It's 120 pages long and it convinced a federal judge there's probable cause to suspect criminal activity by some pilot employees. It also reveals a lot about how the FBI investigation first began last April 15th. In Knoxville, it was a picture-perfect day at Pilot Flying J headquarters a Monday morning at the nation's largest truck stop operator. But just two miles away at FBI headquarters, agents were suiting up for a four-and-a-half-minute ride in total secrecy. Even the chief of police of the city of Knoxville did not know where they were going. Dennis Francis is a Knoxville criminal defense attorney with connections. Turn off your radios, turn off your cell phones, turn off your in-car stuff. Meet us at a rally point, we're going to go, and they sat there and worked the perimeter. Once inside, FBI agents knew exactly where they were going. They headed straight to the top floor, including the front office of pilot CEO Jimmy Haslam. But I suspicion that these search warrants may not be the beginning of this investigation. These search warrants may be the end of the government's investigation. In fact, it all began two full years before with a tip. An extensive review of FBI search warrants and sworn statements reveal how the criminal probe into Haslam and his company unfolded. May 4th, 2011, the tipster told the FBI about alleged fraudulent activity by certain pilot employees. Just weeks later, in June, the FBI's tipster began secretly recording someone inside the company, a regional sales director who knew even more. In the following months, that inside source identified key players inside pilot headquarters in Knoxville, including the company's vice president, plus its national sales director, and claim both were fraudulently withholding fuel rebates from truckers. I have no idea. This is very new to me, okay? The day after the raid. Here again, it was just 24 hours that they came in, and so you it's like getting knocked down. You got to get back up, and then you got to right yourself. Jimmy Haslam spoke out for the first time. Well, you know, we're, as you guys know, we're on a tight ship here, and so we immediately have begun our internal investigation. But the ship was in danger. By the fall of 2012, the FBI had secured a third source, this time a pilot sales manager who had already left the company, partly, she said, because of what she claimed she saw. On October 2nd, FBI agents made an offer she couldn't refuse. Castigar, they come in, they take a statement from you, uh, you swear that the stuff in there is true, they say, we're not going to use this against you unless and until you take the witness stand and you testify differently. And it worked. Obviously, she cooperated to the extent of giving them an affidavit that they use, uh, giving them information that they used to uh, get a federal judge to sign off on a search warrant, multiple search warrants, as a matter of fact. According to FBI records, she described even more pilot employees at headquarters allegedly taking part in the fraud. Just two days later, October 4th, 2012, the FBI moved into high gear. 
For the first time, agents approach that inside source, the regional sales director they've been secretly recording by now for more than a full year. He agreed to work undercover inside Pilot itself. And for the next six months, dinners, training sessions, even meetings inside Pilot headquarters were all caught on tape detailing the alleged fraud. The FBI had hit the jackpot and hit a nerve with Jimmy Haslam. So to have this type of incident happen here at Pilot Flying J is tough. It's really tough. It's rocked us back. I, I won't tell you any differently. It was now four days after the raid. Somebody asked me today if I was going to step down as president, and I thought to myself, well, why would I do that? Um, candidly, um, I haven't done anything wrong. Well, through his attorney, Jimmy Haslam declined to be interviewed for this report. I'll be back with more on what the FBI's inside source claims Haslam knew and when he knew it. I'm Chief Investigator Ron Regan. The fallout from the FBI raid at Pilot Flying J has resulted in dramatic turnover at Pilot Flying J. Seven pilot employees have already pled guilty to fraud-related charges and have agreed to testify against others. Maximum sentences run 5 to 20 years in prison. Six pilot sales executives have resigned or were fired. Three more employees placed on administrative leave and two new vice presidents hired. Plus, the company faces expensive class action lawsuits. 25 trucking companies are taking Pilot Flying J to court. Meanwhile, a settlement agreement that would repay trucking company companies 100% of what's owed plus 6% interest could win final approval by a federal judge this November. Pilot estimates more than 4,000 trucking companies fall into the settlement class. And a lawyer for one of the trucking companies suing Haslam calls it the best settlement offer he's ever seen. Could the FBI investigation affect the Cleveland Browns? NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell has expressed his support for Haslam, and the Browns say the probe has not impacted the team. Investigator Sarah Buttison has been digging into the effects of the investigation. Jimmy Haslam says he plans to own the Cleveland Browns for a long, long time. But what will happen to the team if he is indicted, or worse? Convicted. Well, it's business as usual. Jimmy Haslam has said repeatedly. It in no way jeopardizes our ownership of the Browns. The FBI investigation into his company, Pilot Flying J. And I understand in Cleveland there's a great deal of uncertainty. Will not impact the Cleveland Browns. Our family's going to own this asset for a long, long time. He's a man that I think everyone truly respects in the NFL. And he has the support of the man who matters most, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. As I said before, he's a man of integrity, and this company's meant a lot to him and his family. But if Haslam is indicted or convicted of cheating truckers out of rebates, can he keep the Cleveland Browns? I don't see any scenario developing where that would change. Jim Kadlicek teaches sports business at Mountain Union College in Alliance. I don't see any any scenario where the league would step in and say, we're going to run this organization. Kadlicek says if Haslam ends up in court or behind bars, it's likely a family member would take over the team. I'm sure there are things in place that if something were to happen to him, they would maintain ownership. There have been reports Jimmy Haslam's father would take over. But Haslam's spokesperson called questions about ownership irrelevant because Jimmy has no plans to step down. We actually hold ownership to a higher standard. The NFL could fine, suspend, or even ban Haslam from the game if he is convicted of a crime. During a visit to Brown's training camp in Berea last month, Goodell wouldn't discuss what he would do. Would the NFL take action if he were convicted? <laughs> Again, I, we're, we're not going to, that's not the situation we're in. Kadlicek thinks Goodell would take it easy on Haslam. He wasn't betting on his team. He wasn't bribing officials. Uh, so he was doing nothing that impacted the integrity of the league. Kadlicek also thinks the investigation will have little impact on the field. He says as long as players are being paid and the coaching staff is doing the coaching, the investigation is nothing more than a minor distraction. On your side, I'm investigator Sarah Buttison. We extended interview invitations to the Cleveland Browns about team operations as the FBI probe continues to unfold. 
They declined our offers. If you would like to talk about the Pilot Flying J investigation, you can log on to our website, newsnet5.com. On your side, investigators Ron Regan and Sarah Buddison are online now chatting about the April 15th raid and the developments over the past four months. This is not the first time an NFL owner faced a legal scandal. I look back at Eddie DeBartolo Jr.'s fall from 49er grace when our investigative special continues. Selling brand in Northeast Ohio. Were you aware and did you participate in any way? Yeah, absolutely not. I will say that again, absolutely not. One month after the raid on Pilot Flying J at a trucking industry convention, Jimmy Haslam continued to deny he knew anything about the alleged fuel rebate scheme. The federal investigation into Pilot Flying J raises a lot of questions. Who knew what about the alleged fraud? And then the raid. On your side, Chief Investigator Ron Regan rejoins us with what Jimmy Haslam did or didn't know. Well, Danita Hasselman says he knew nothing of any alleged wrongdoing. But as the investigation unfolded, the inside source was telling the FBI that fraud would be clearly evident. And a flurry of activity inside pilot headquarters early last April may have triggered the raid. Uh, somebody asked me today if I was going to step down as president, and I thought to myself, well, why would I do that? Um, candidly. Um, I haven't done anything wrong, number one. But the FBI was being fed a different story. One day last October, their inside source was now secretly recording Pilot's vice president. On tape, the FBI learned of an alleged million dollar payoff to a Nashville trucking company called Western Express. The cash for a plane so broke it didn't even fly was in return for allegedly cheating on fuel rebates. But it's what happened at pilot headquarters a month later that caught the FBI's attention. November 20th, 2012, a top level meeting with sales directors, managers, and pilot's top executives. On tape, a male voice interrupts company president Mark Hazelwood's presentation and references the allegedly deceptive conduct with Western Express. And present at that same meeting was pilot CEO Jimmy Hassel, according to these FBI documents. A week after the raid, there is absolutely no excuse for that kind of behavior. The FBI released this affidavit containing some of the taped conversations. That was the most painful and still is 48 hours that I've ever experienced in business. It was Haslam's third news conference since the April 15th raid. And it was painful because that's not how we do things around here. It's now January 2013, and the FBI's inside source describes an email claiming both Jimmy Haslam and his vice president are looking carefully at every customer's profit and lost reports. The source tells the FBI the rebate fraud would have been evident. A few weeks later, in February, the million dollar airplane deal came up again. On tape, the FBI's inside source asked pilot vice president John Freeman whether Haslam or company president Mark Hazelwood knew about it. Freeman responds with an expletive. I mean, I called Jimmy and told him I got busted at Western Express. Oh, he knew it, absolutely. I mean, he knew all along. In news conferences following the raid, Haslam downplayed the extent of the alleged fraud. I think the key thing to focus on is that the investigation remains zeroed in on what we believe to be a very narrow part of our business. But by March 7th, the investigation headed to a dramatic close. Account executive Ashley Judd who has since pled guilty to her role in the scheme, revealed on tape she'd burn files if caught. Then, on April 1st, the FBI's inside source alerted the FBI. Pilot's chief financial officer and the company's top lawyer were asking questions about those fuel rebates. Finally, on April 9th, Pilot's top lawyer ordered all rebate-related documents turned over to her office by close of business 
Friday, April 12th. Three days later, on April 15th, the FBI moved in. As I've mentioned on numerous times, we will cooperate with federal authorities, and at the same time, we'll continue our own investigation. And if that investigation yields anything that we think is not consensual, I'm struggling for words, is not appropriate in the way we expect everybody to act in Pilot Flying J, then we'll take immediate action. Well, Haslam has hired an independent investigator. His internal report will be sent to Pilot's Board of Directors. Meanwhile, the FBI's now going over hours and hours of secret tape recordings, plus hard drives and emails of 35 pilot employees, including Jimmy Haslam. But two pilot employees didn't waste a minute. Both confessed their roles the very day the FBI walked into the building. I'm Chief Investigator Ron Regan. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell has expressed his support for Haslam. The Browns have repeatedly said the probe has had no effect on team operations. Looking back, there's only one other time in NFL history an owner has faced trouble with an outside business. In 1998, Eddie DeBartolo Jr., a Northeast Ohio native, admitted paying a bribe to the governor of Louisiana for a casino license. As on your side, investigator Sarah Buddison reports, the playbook for this kind of ownership dilemma is limited. We are the best, and we will continue to be the best. Well, you had a lot of people who were Cleveland fans and Pittsburgh fans who all of a sudden were 49er fans. Ralph Zerbonia remembers. They had a reason to be. What it was like in Youngstown. I think really it made for a lot of excitement in the area. When Eddie DeBartolo Jr. owned the San Francisco 49ers. Super Bowl became personal. Mr. DeBartolo, likewise. So honor the judge's order and make no questions. In 1997, everything changed. I think it took a long time, even for you know, reporters and, and news directors in this market to believe that you know, Eddie Jr.'s in this kind of trouble. Well, the Browns made a lot of noise over the weekend. Bob Hannon was the sports director at WYTV, Youngstown's ABC affiliate. Well, I think that most felt that he was above this. He was too smart for this, that Eddie Jr. was uh, too rich for this. DeBartolo was indicted on federal charges and admitted he paid Louisiana Governor Edwin Edwards $400,000 for a casino license. He was sentenced to two years probation and a $1 million fine. Thank you. I love you all. As the scandal broke, he resigned as CEO of the 49ers and turned the team over to his sister. Following his guilty plea, the NFL handed down its own punishment. DeBartolo was suspended from the league for one year and fined $1 million. He was a nice guy. Youngstown took it hard. They were sad. They were sad. Barbara Amstutz lived in DeBartolo's neighborhood. Because he was a hometown guy who had made good, and, and here he was messing with the wrong people. You have a choice as to whether you do that or not. He made the wrong choice. When you look back on it, it's sort of surreal. Eddie DiBartolo, <laughs> the owner of the 49ers, is down there already congratulating. I remember after the one Super Bowl, he brought the entire team to Youngstown. We're talking Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Roger Craig. They were all here. He's glad to have this behind him. But when this happened, he really disappeared from the Mahoney Valley. We reached out to Eddie DeBartolo Jr. He declined to comment on our story. On your side, I'm investigator Sarah Buddison. Up next, calculating the cost to the Pilot Flying J fortune. You might be surprised with the math. Plus, show of support. See what friends, business, and philanthropic leaders did to support Jimmy Haslam. Furniture Home Store in Mentor and Fairlawn. Welcome back to our News Channel 5 investigative special, Jimmy Haslam, The Investigation. How will the ongoing probe impact Pilot Flying J? The Five on Your Side investigator Joe Paganakis reports. John Carroll Economics Professor Dr. Scott Moore places Flying J's revenues in the $30 billion range and its current debts at about $4 billion. Moody's Corporation placed Pilot on credit watch for three months because of the ongoing federal investigation, but on July 20th upheld the company's healthy credit rating. 
Moore says that's great news for Pilot, but that doesn't affirm Haslam's net worth or the financial stability of his ownership of the Browns. It's good because it means that the income stream that helps to support uh, Jimmy Haslam is, is uh, in good shape. Uh, it doesn't really say much about what the situation for the Browns is because that's a, that's a separate business entity. Dr. Leroy Brooks, professor at John Carroll's Bowler School of Business, says Pilot is far from being out of financial uncertainty. Brooks says the case against the company is still filled with the unknown, which could easily send Pilot into shrinking profits and back on credit watch. They don't know what the suits are going to be. They don't know the extent of the damages. They don't know if they're being what the criminal liabilities might be. So the great unknown, they've got to, they've got to basically cover themselves. Dr. Brooks says higher interest rates on Pilot's debt could have a ripple effect on Pilot's profits, even though the company would likely maintain an excellent cash flow. And the big question, could developments in the ongoing FBI investigation have an impact impact on Haslam's net worth and the financial stability of his Browns ownership. It possibly could because then the view would be that he was possibly personally culpable in part of what went on and then that would be a question of the, the character and quality of the company. Meanwhile, both professors agree Browns fans should be prepared for a tedious, painstaking process in determining Haslam's future as the owner of the Orange and Brown. But I don't think by the end of the Brown season even, we're going to know what the end of this story is. The end of this story is going to come uh, in little bits and pieces of information, especially as the legal process plays out, both on the criminal side and on the uh, civil side. And Dr. Brooks also believes that Potted Flying J could easily deal with a minor downgrading of its credit rating because of the company's massive cash flow. That potential trouble could only occur if the company was downgraded multiple levels by more than one of the key credit rating agencies. Reporting here from the Pilot Travel Center in Lodi, Ohio, I'm troubleshooter Joe Paganakis. So how has the FBI investigation impacted Pilot so far? The company's chief financial officer released this update. Pilot may be losing a very small amount of volume to competition. Pilot's debt is well within the comfort zone, which is approximately 40% of the value of the company. Plus, Pilot says it had a very solid operating and profit-generating month of July. Finally, the company says it remains exceptionally strong with operating cash similar to months before the investigation. You can access Pilot's website at rebateeducation.pilot.com flyingj.com to see regular updates and how the company is doing. Jimmy Haslam has the support of not only the NFL commissioner, but of hundreds of others. Just days after the FBI raid, more than 150 of Tennessee's leading citizens and companies signed this full-page newspaper ad thanking Haslam for his years of leadership and example. Stay with News Channel 5 as we continue to follow the FBI's investigation and what it means to Northeast Ohio. We thank you for watching.